How cool are they? They are cinemagraphs, still photographs in which a minor and repeated movement occurs. They're really fun to put together and they look awesome posted up on social media. Now this is one of those weird processes which is both fun, simple and easy on one hand, but annoying and difficult on the other. The actual process itself is really quite simple and easy, but it can be difficult and fiddly to get the cinemagraph looping and looking just right. So you just need to keep at it, keep practicing until you get the general gist of it. Now, if you want to practice using those stock footage I used at the beginning of this video, all of them are linked down in the description below so you can download the exact same footage for free and start practicing with those before you go out and start filming your own. Now, if you do want to go out and film your own, your best bet, take a tripod and make sure that's nice and sturdy and make sure your subject doesn't move around too much and then you have a much better chance of putting these cinemagraphs together. Right, with all that out of the way, let's open DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to do it. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve and I'm currently on the edit tab and I've got my timeline set up and ready to go. Now the first clip I'm going to use is this one. This is just one I recorded myself with the camera set up on a tripod of me with a hose pipe. Now this one is really simple but it shows you the fundamental idea of how this works. So first things first I'm just going to get rid of my audio because I don't need it. Hold the alt key and click on the audio just select the audio on its own. Hit delete to get rid of that. Now what we want to do is to move our playhead to the point where we want to freeze frame. So I'm standing still at this point here, so I'm going to use this as my freeze frame. So I've got my playhead right there, I'm going to give my video a click on the timeline, open up the inspector top right hand corner, expand the speed change area, and then we're going to click on this little snowflake icon to add a freeze frame. That'll make a cut exactly where your playhead is. Everything before the cut will be normal video and everything afterwards will be that freeze frame. So I'm just going to drag the freeze frame up a track. We can bring that back then we can bring the video forwards just to drag it like so. Then we're going to give our freeze frame a click and we're going to jump into the color tab. Now, as with nearly everything in DaVinci Resolve, there are multiple ways that you could do this. You could do it with Infusion. I just prefer to do it within the color tab. So what we're going to do Make sure we've got our nodes open by clicking on nodes in the top right hand corner. Right click on any empty space to add an alpha output. And then drag this little blue box here to this little blue circle over there. Now what that means is anything that we cut out will be transparent revealing the video underneath. So then we just need to do our masking to cut things out. So click on this icon here in the middle to activate your power windows here. And then we're going to grab the pen tool and then we're going to click on this icon here to invert the pen tool. And then all we need to do is to draw around the bits which we want to be animated or moving within our cinemagraph. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit using my mouse wheel, we'll do a quick cut just on the little hose pipe there. And then we don't need to be accurate with this because there's no camera movement, there's no changes in lighting. We'll join that up and then if we hit play we've got something like this. Now at this point, what I'd like to do, underneath your preview window, use the little drop down and change that to off. And then have a look to see if you've got any harsh edges. So I've got a little bit of a harsh edge over here by the hose pipe end. So I'm going to come down to where my power window is, just to the right, you've got softness. I'm just going to increase that softness, just to soften that edge, just that little bit, make it look a little bit neater. Once that's done, we're going to jump back into the edit tab. And now all we need to do, we've got our freeze frame, we've got our cut, we just need to find our loop. So this bit here looks good for me, right there. Now the hose pipes and water is a great example because you don't really need to do any matching. So I'm going to grab that bit there, do a cut, we'll delete that bit. I'll hit play until there's some sort of distracting movement or something I don't want. So the hose pipe moves up at that point. So then we'll do another control and B to cut that. We'll delete this end section. We'll move this to the beginning. And now I've got this section. And then because it matches really well, it's just water. You can't really see where any cuts will be. We can just duplicate this section. So I'm going to hold the Alt key on my keyboard, and just drag. I can highlight again and drag, highlight again, hold Alt and drag, just to duplicate this a bunch of times. And then if we hit play, We've got our very first cinemagraph. You can make this as long as you like, export it as a video, upload it to Instagram, do whatever you want to do, and there you go. That's the basic core idea 
of the Cinemagraph. And then a quick tip to make life a little bit easier, once you've got your Cinemagraph, like so, so I've got my freeze frame and everything underneath here, if you highlight all of it, so it's all highlighted in red, right click, and then you're gonna create a new compound clip. Give it a name if you want to, and then hit create, and that'll bundle the whole thing into a compound clip. It's got your freeze frame, it's got everything built into it, so it's just a little bit easier to move around the timeline. If you then wanted to get it back to the way it was, you simply right click, and then you decompose in place, and then you get everything back as it was. But to move around and to use it on the timeline, you can keep it as a compound clip, and it just makes your life that little bit easier. So we're gonna try this one here. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because there's a few more bits going on, but it's still not too bad. So the first thing we want to do again is to find that point we want as the freeze frame. So I'm gonna go where this doesn't move all that much. It's relatively stationary, it'll just make life easier. So there's a bit here where it wobbles a bit, but doesn't move around too much. So we're gonna go with about there. And then we'll do our freeze frame. So we give them a click, inspector, speed change, freeze frame, drag this up, drag this out, and here we go. We're gonna give the freeze frame a click, jump into the color tab, exactly the same thing, right click, add an alpha output, connect our dots, grab our pen tool, invert our pen tool, and now we need to do our selection. So again, we're just doing the same thing. We're picking the bits that we want to be moving. And once again, because this sort of liquid part here will be moving left and right a little bit, we don't want to be too accurate because then it will cut things off. We want to leave a little bit of space either side to allow for some movement. And at the bottom here, I want a little bit of splash as well. So I'm just going to come around and then we'll come back up and connect that up. We'll turn our power window off so we can see what we're doing. And then if we hit play, we've got something that looks like this. Now we have got these harsh cuts, so we're gonna add some softness just to hide those. And there we go, perfect. We'll jump back into the edit tab, just bring my freeze frame back. And again, what we need to do now is to find our loop. So we don't want this beginning section, the juice level is too low. We don't want this section because the juice level is too high. So we just want a short section where the juice is about right and it's pouring nicely. So I'm going to go with about here to start with. We can probably get away with about there. So we'll cut that, we'll delete this last section and we'll move this back. Now because we've got things moving around a little bit more, we've got our liquid level rising, we can't just do the same thing. So I can't just duplicate this because this cut will be too obvious. We can see it looks a little bit janky. So we need to hide that cut. Now we could use a transition here, but then we'd have to make the transition every single time and it'd be time consuming. So there's a quick hack you could do for this. What I'm gonna do is come down here, roughly in the middle of this clip, do a quick cut, so control B, and then move the front section to the end, like so, and then bring this back. So now this cut that we've got to deal with is right in the middle here. But if we were to duplicate this, these two sections would flow perfectly into one another. So then we just need to deal with this cut here. So I'm gonna grab either a cross dissolve by opening up the effects library, going to video transitions, and then cross dissolve, or a smooth cut. Both work well. Sometimes you just want to experiment with each one to see which works the best. So I'm going to go across dissolve, put that on this section here, lengthen out a little bit. And if we hit play, that doesn't look too bad. At this point as well, don't forget you can click on your cut and you can move it around just to try and level it out to get it looking exactly as you want it. Tinker with it, mess to make sure that your loop is looking the best. And then once you're happy with it, highlight all of that section, hold alt, and then once again, you can duplicate it. It will duplicate it with that transition all ready to go. And now you've got your cinemagraph with your loop. Now for the final one, we're gonna go slightly more complicated still. So this one is this lady here. She's standing on the train station with this train and we want sort of an infinite loop with the train, like an infinite train going past. Now this one's difficult because this lady moves forwards a little bit. So what we want is you want to freeze frame at the point where she's covering most of the frame. So you see, if I was to do a cut, a freeze frame here, at this point, 
she's further forward so she's going to be in the way of the train and that's going to make our life difficult so what i want to do is freeze frame when she's the furthest forward she's here with her eyes open there we go that seems like the perfect place for me so then same thing i'm going to do my freeze frame i'll bring my freeze frame up and i'll just bring it back and there we go and we're going to give it a click jump into the color tab add our alpha output grab our pen invert that and then job done so this bit we do need to be a little bit more accurate there's some shadows down here caused by the train so we want to make sure that they are moving as well and then this bit where the train goes past this lady's sort of coat and front we want to be really accurate there so the top won't matter too much we'll come down be relatively rough here but then at this coat we want to be quite accurate i'll do it quickly for this video but we'll sort of cut through there like so and then we can just come around and job done once again turn your power window off so you can actually see the cuts is there anything that look, looks a bit janky there a bit of a harsh edge so we will add just the tiniest bit of softness I'm not going to add much at all because we don't want this coat to start becoming a little bit see-through and there you go that looks pretty good so we'll jump back into the edit tab and now once again we need to find our loop now this train is a bit more difficult because we've got these advertisements down here we don't want those in it because they're going to cause us some issues we don't want the front of the train because that will cause us some issues as well so what i'm going to use is this first section of the train here because it's pretty uniform you can't really tell one door from the other so we should be able to make a nice loop there so i'm going to grab this door when it's right there next to the right side of the frame and then we're just going to move forward until the next door is in the same place about there we'll do a cut and we'll delete this section and now we should be able to duplicate that if we hit play there's a little wobble but overall that's pretty good so we're going to do our little trick we'll do a cut right in the middle we'll swap the front to the end bring that back we'll grab a cross dissolve just to smooth that cut out in the middle and then we can duplicate this Do it a few times we hit play and that looks pretty good we've got our infinite train with our freeze frame and we've got our cinemagraph job done now if you want to get fancy you can start to add some adjustment clips with some fake camera motion just to give it a bit of extra so if i come down to the effects library again go to effects i'm going to grab an adjustment clip put it on top of everything like so come down to open effects scroll all the way down until we get to our resolve fx transform area add the camera shake hit play it's going to be a bit crazy like that give the adjustment clip a click inspect it in the top right hand corner go to effects and then just bring down the motion scale and the speed scale and then if we hit play needs a bit more motion there a bit more still And there we go we've got a little bit of camera movement just to make it look a little bit more authentic now in this example if you want to get really fancy you can also start to add some additional motion blur to this train to really sort of hide it and make it look a little bit more realistic there's a bunch of ways that you can do that in davinci resolve but what i like to do i'm going to highlight all of this section i'm going to right click and i'm going to create a new fusion clip we're then going to right click again and we're going to open in the fusion page and then when we're in here, I'm going to hold control and hit the space bar to open up our select tool option. I'm then going to type in motion. I'm going to find the motion trails and then we're going to click add. I'm going to hold shift and drag it up to this line until it turns yellow and blue just to attach it in there. And then you can see we've got these motion trails on our train, which just to help hide things a little bit more. You can use the inspector to adjust the motion trails as you need to so let's i'm going to leave it as five and if we just jump back into the edit tab we go back to the beginning we hit play and there we go we've got our cinema graph with our blurry train job done ready to go then you just need to export this as normal 
as a video, you can make it as long or as short as you like and upload it to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or do whatever you want with it. And that's it for this one. Now, if you do make some cinematographs of your own and post them up on social media, don't forget to tag me or let me know so I can come and take a look. Now, if you did enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. Any thoughts or feedback down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.